Hello, fellow American, whomever you might be and wherever you might be. I have a very specific question to ask you. How many of our U.S. presidents' names can you remember, can you recall? Even more importantly, how many of our 45 U.S. presidents do you really know? Did you ever get to really know? I'm asking you this question because why do America's teachers and students receive President's Day off? What have we done to earn that, that our teachers and our students have one more day off? I'm asking you specifically because I believe very few of America's adults, very few of America's teenagers and children ever really get to know much about our past 45 presidents. So why do we receive this day off? Isn't this a perfect day for teachers to be sharing with students about our past presidents? Not memorizing, just getting to know, just getting to know about the past presidents. So part of the presentation has to do with students should not be told to memorize 45 U.S. presidents. That's where the problem is. That's the fly in the ointment. Teachers thinking that whatever they teach, eventually children have to be tested on that information, which they don't. So just getting to know presidents. Yes, as an exercise in memorization, it would be nice to start with the number one and link that to George Washington in a meaningful way and then progress from there through all 45 presidents. While children are knowing, you're learning a method for memorizing while you memorize America's 45 presidents. You may never need this information. This information may never be of a real value to you, but while we're memorizing the U.S. 45 presidents, you'll be learning a method, practicing a method, mastering a method for memorizing. Isn't that what's most important? Isn't that truth what's most important? Isn't that knowledge that's most important for our children? So they should not be the burden on them to memorize. Instead, students should be inspired to get to know 45 U.S. presidents. Maybe they can relate to a certain president in a certain way. Maybe that president's from their state. Maybe they have some kind of a relationship through past history with that president. So students should be inspired to get to know 45 U.S. presidents. Just like students should get to know how the states got their capital, how the states got their shapes. I don't have a book about presidents, but I do have a book that I was inspired to purchase how the states got their shapes. I thought, isn't that interesting? We see our U.S. map, America's map, we see these different states outlined, and we're never taught, why do they have their shapes? Why did Wisconsin, my home state, get its shape? So I looked through the book and randomly opened a page to California. Very simple and very intriguing about California. How come California is so big? And since it is so big, how come it doesn't include that long peninsula that continues from its southern end? Why are the straight lines of its northern and eastern borders located where they are? And why does its eastern border bend? If Congress followed a policy that all states should be created equal, why did it create California? Answer, it didn't. California created itself. So in talking about creating, or better yet, memorizing and creating, our students are not taught how to memorize, and our students aren't taught how to create. So trying to get to the point about 45 U.S. presidents, they really don't need to memorize the information about 45 U.S. presidents unless it's first shared with them that they're actually learning a method for memorizing while they are memorizing the 45 U.S. presidents. So first and foremost, isn't time the essence of doing anything, of learning and working? Isn't time a crucial element? 
Well, in the Arizona Republic uh, on February 2nd, why do we leave our kids' education to a game of chance? I'll be speaking about this shortly, but isn't the real, one of the real elements time? Currently, America's teachers, 150 days out of the year, they are teaching. So if we figure, well, two weeks for vacation, that's normal for most Americans. So we take then 50 weeks out of the year for a work week and say, well, 150 days out of the year, that's only three days per week working. So America's teachers are currently working three days per week on average. So I bring up the point to you again. And I ask you the question again. Why do America's teachers and students receive President's Day off? Isn't this a perfect day to share, for teachers to share with teenagers and children, their students, about our U.S. presidents? Why is this a holiday? It started back in 1971. And I believe from that forward, very few students, very few teenagers, very few children, very few adults know anything about our 45 U.S. presidents. So I hope you contemplate with me and I hope you take action. I hope you go to stopk12testing.us. Stop k12testing.us because we have to lift the burden off of our teachers, lift the burden off of our students, and instead inspire them to learn more instead of the weight and the burden of testing them on what they know. I hope you visit stopk12testing.us. And if you have a good reason why students have off today, I wish you'd share with me. I believe today is a perfect day for teachers to be inspiring students to learn more about our 45 U.S. presidents. Thank you very much for participating.